the guys that that take you guys' advice. And it sometimes, you know, it ruins their life. What what would men do if they begged you for advice? Again, I'm not in the business of telling men what to do. Hmm. I wonder where I've heard that before. You know. But I think you kind of are. Well, what percent of women do you think are marriageable? I think you're skirting the issue. Okay. So from the jump. Now, this is a this is actually very super long. Um, this is actually the full length thing. I just want to give you the in this is the what Daily Wire decided to go with as the leader to drag you into the full video. This is the full video, by the way, but I wanted to show you the leader here. Okay. People are not going to return to marriage until you make the institution more fair. Well, what they'll do doesn't is they'll matter, return. It yeah. doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what I say. You guys have been preaching marriage for a decade. Yep. And the rates of marriage have still been going down. Why? Because the cost is too high and the quality of women is too low. How do you fix it? Do you want to get married? Oops. Okay. That's intentional. This is this is the best that they could do. Remember, this is the best they could do. The red pill woman. Notice it's not Michael and Pearl Davis. It's Michael and the red pill woman. Like she's not even a name. Not even a name in the fucking title, man. This is what you signed up with. This is what you wanted, Pearl. This is what you got. All right, hold on. That, that was the that. So that's the lead in there. That's how they till the fields. Right. Remember what we were talking about when I was talking about Ben and how they wanted to have like they would say, this is what the red pill is really about. You don't even remember Ben. He's the guy that's the red pill. I know Down syndrome. Right. That's who he is. This is what the red pill is about. She's not even Pearl. That She doesn't even get I'm gonna put that up there. She doesn't even get a billing on the title screen. Now, let me introduce her later on, of course. But she doesn't even get a billing on the title? Really? I don't know about you. I don't know what you paid for this. I don't know what you, all the hoops you had to jump through flying out your producer and who you're paying right now and also flying your happy ass out from the UK. And God knows what it cost you to do, do this whole trip and you don't even get your name on the fucking title. God. I don't know. That right there would be enough for me to lose my shit. Uh, let's see where to go. Oh, uh, this is a pretty good one. Let's go with this one. I, I pulled these clips here. Hold on. Facts don't care about your religion. So I, I think facts is, don't care about the way you feel about them. What do you I think, think a fact I think, is? I think that, what do you think a fact is? <laughs> that women are paid to leave marriages. That's just a fact. Oh, oh, I yeah, thought you were yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so. <laughs> Michael's trying to like, Michael's on a different like, like tangent, and she's just going back to talking points. Pearl is all rote memorization. That's all it is. She's rote memorization and can't even remember it for herself. She can't even, and when people say, well, Rolla, why do you have a problem? Well, okay, my main problem, first of all, she shouldn't be in doing whatever she's doing right now. She should not be in this, because she's the red pill woman, right? She's not, she's not even Pearl Davis, she's the red pill woman. And, She's trying to defend points that she doesn't have anything memorized with an ability to defend. Now, the reason why it took, I had to go and just pull clips. All these clips, by the way, are pulled, you'll, you'll notice the Daily Wire has their uh, has their watermark on this the whole time, because these are all coming off of Michael Knowles, like his channel, and uh, I got I think I got some of these from Twitter. This is what he wants to promote as, here's what happened during this exchange. I win, she loses. Ha ha. Like you're they, they know damn well nobody's gonna watch the whole thing. It's hard to fucking see in the first place. All right. So she starts with rope memorization. And if you watch the first 20 minutes of this, and I if if you can stomach it that long, if you watch the first 20 minutes of this, she rattles it off, she rattles off point after point after point, like just machine guns it off and hopes that something is going to like create a thread for him to get into. He says, What do you think a fact is? He's not saying name a fact about marriage. He's like, what is factual? That's he's, he's trying to get into the nature of what is a fact, not what is a fact about what you what it is you're talking about. And that's why he has to shift gears right here. You know, okay. I mean that that's just that's just a fact. And the way you feel about it doesn't change the way it is. Actually, the way that I feel, mm -hmm. which I hoped I like to think I've arrived at that through reason. So I think it's tethered to something, you know, okay. real. Uh, does affect the way that I behave. 
and the way that I behave does, to some degree, affect the social circumstances in which we all live. Mm -hmm. So in a way, actually, uh, you know, a friend of mine says facts don't care about your feelings. But politics largely cares about your feelings, and your mm -hmm. feelings are cultivated through virtuous and vicious habits. Mm -hmm. And being selfish and sleeping around and not getting married and I not having say, kids I don't is say vicious. Men, I don't say and getting married is very around. virtuous. I don't say that men should sleep around. With but you them. say they shouldn't get married if you were to give advice, which you don't. <laughs> did you know that? Did you know that? Like, by not saying, like, if you're against marriage, you have to necessarily be for women's and men's. Like, it's it's almost as if there's like this binary, like, it, it's it's binary logic is what it is. If if it's not on, then it's off. There's no like two two of those things can't exist at the same time. The entirety of this whole thing, what the exchange between, I'm going to do the uh, the DNA testing here in just a second, but the entirety of the exchange when it comes to marriage, the whole thing, because this whole thing was supposed to be about marriage, right? That's why they wanted me on there. That's why they wanted James Sexton on there. Um, again, as I said, remember what I said before earlier in the show today, this would have been a much different show had it been myself and James Sexton on that show. It would have been a much different show had it been James Sexton and Pearl on that show because Pearl wouldn't have had gotten into words because she doesn't know what she's talking about, but James Sexton does. And it would have been, she would have been just along for the ride on this whole thing. So when she's trying to defend points here, she doesn't, she's just basically trying to fall back on the other point or other talking points that she has memorized. She doesn't, she has no, she has a complete inability to quote stats. She has a complete inability of like, she can't even get Aaron Clary's name right for fuck's sake, but she, she can't say where she got these facts. Like just like earlier in the, in the, uh, in the interview, she's like talking about, well, 70% of women, uh, initiate divorce, right? You can, that's a, that's a long drawn out. You could do a whole show just on that In fact, I have, right. But she doesn't say where she's get, she got the stats. If uh, one of my pet peeves, of course, is when like people quote um, the Morgan Stanley like rise of the she economy uh, data, which by the way is like old now. That was from like 2018, but people are still quoting it today because they heard me talk about. Actually, I talked talked about it with like Pat Campbell back in the day. They have been hearing it so long they don't know where it came from. And so, just like the telephone game, it goes from. Uh, what is it? Women, uh, working age women between 25 and 44. Uh, what is it? Uh, 42, 42 percent of them will be single by 20 by uh, so 2030. There's no data. There's no stats. There's not even a quote in there about whether they'll be childless or not. It doesn't say that. But people took that and they said single and childless because it sounds right. There's nothing in that study about that. I try to make a point of that. They don't even say, they don't even want to quote where it comes from because they don't know. They don't know it was Morgan Stanley. They don't know that it was like a projection for the next 10 years. Well, 12 years in this case. They just took that and said, well, look, look how selfish and stupid women are, right? And that might even be the case, but you don't make that case if you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And that requires you to actually be interested in the topics and be interested and have like a dedication to those topics. You won't be able to quote those things. You won't be able to say those things, okay? Yes, Michael Knowles is most definitely about straw men. That's why she's the red pill woman. That's why they didn't even give her a fucking name. She has no name. I mean, if if if, she, if he didn't say Pearl Davis during the interview, she'd just be the red pill woman. That's all it would be. That right there, god damn, man. That, I'm sorry, That even that kind of, I almost feel bad for Pearl for that, almost. <laughs> all right, so that's number one. Uh, I want to talk about the feelings part here because this is, I think she really wanted to get more, get more in depth in the uh, fuck your feet. She just wanted to, she wanted a, a, an opportunity to say fuck your feelings, right? Which by the way, is not Myron Gaines and it's not Rolo Tomasi. It's actually Gad Saad who said that. And essentially what it is, is it's you, the, the missed opportunity here is illustrating the difference between an emotional, emotional language versus empirical language. Of course, he's all about feelings. He wants to say, well, I'd like to think that my feelings are based on, you know, well-reasoned stuff. No, no, they're not. Because emotion, I can change your emotion by shooting you up with trend. I can change your emotion by putting a lot of tequila in you right now. I can change your emotions by fucking with your biochemistry. I can give you mood altering drugs and change the way you feel about it. I can change how you vote. 
by making you feel bad or if you feel depressed, I can, I can do things. I could get that behavior out of you if I can make you feel differently because emotions are not fucking magic. And that's what he thinks it is. Emotions are not magic. They're biochemistry is what they are, essentially. Emotions are meant, are, are meant to be motivators to get you from one, get you out of one situation and into another. And usually it's based on two things, survival and reproduction. Those are the two bases. So how you feel when we say, fuck your feelings, right? Well, he wants to say, well, you know, it's, uh, well, what about behavior and doing virtuous things and everything else? Yeah, that behavior is motivated by those feelings. That never happens. That, that conversation never takes place in this because she doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. And she's rattling off point after point after point after point after point and hoping that something he's going to pick up on something. And she'll be able to like keep going with it. She's completely out of her depth. And which is like to say something because Michael Knowles isn't all that deep to begin with. But she's like very out of her depth in this. Uh, let's see. That's That wasn't even the worst of it too. Let me jump in here. Oh God, which one should we do? Okay, we've got facts and feelings. Let's do this one. God, I, I, I shudder who goes to university. I'm sure you get these letters, I get them too. Mm -hmm. Woman who goes to a university is told, hook up with every guy you can, study some- She chooses to, not told. She's also told, and she chooses to. Yes, she's she also told by the to, culture. Because that's what she wants to do. But she's also told to do it by the culture. You can't down- You know, what gets me is this, is like, this, I've actually had this conversation with Jedediah Abila in the past. Whenever you put the word culture on the end of anything, you're making whatever you put before it endemic. We've said that a million times on the show. It bears repeating one more time. If it's hookup culture, it's like everybody's fucking. If it's culture, everybody's. If it's bro culture, everybody's broing. If it's marriage, I've heard marriage culture too. It's marriage culture from the left. I'm made to feel bad because marriage culture tells me that I need to get married and I want to be an independent, strong, independent woman. Marriage culture. Boom. Everyone's getting married. Everyone thinks you should get married. Heard that one too. So it's on both sides, by the way. Like think, of it, think of examples of culture. Hookup culture is the one. Now, there is no hookup culture, period. End of story. There's, hookup, there's a hookup culture for a very small fraction of men. The Justin Wallers of the world, the four and a half percenters, you might be able to make an argument that those guys, those very elite top level guys can fuck like their sports fucking, right? You, okay, we can we can go there. But you ladies in the audience or people who are watching this right now, if you ever went to college, did, was there like some like, hey, everybody, we need to get, it's part of orientation, right? Like you go to the university and you got to go through the orientation class. You know, maybe you're there on a Saturday or something like that. It's your first time at, at, at college, or maybe it's like some, some dorm, you know, get together or something. It's orientation. Part of orientation is like this. They, this is what they think. Orientation consists of, Hey ladies, come over here. Now, now that you're in university, we need to have the talk. You have to fuck as many guys as you possibly can. This is hookup land. This is hookup culture. Fuck as many go up. And it's like this formal, yeah, you know, sucking 101. Thank you. The, as soon as you get there, the orient part of the orientation for women is, well, okay, now you have to accept hookup culture and you have to fuck, you have to fuck lots and lots of guys here because that's what we do in university. And you know that, and he's just basically saying, you know that they tell them this, right? Where? In hookup 101? In college university orientation, is that when you get it? Because I missed that fucking class. I would assume that they would want to tell the top four and a half percent guys too. Like, hey guys, this will be really brief. I know this is part of the orientation, but you gotta fuck as many chicks as you can. This is hookup. This is this is hookup you. <laughs> this is this is the uh, this is Arizona State University. Okay, you might have enough case for at Arizona State. Okay, but other than that. <laughs> It's a party school. You got, you got to fuck as many people as you can. It's not like there's some formal, like, like greeting committee. Ladies, fuck as many guys as you can. That's how it works here. You're in university now. And play that, right? I, you can be told to do so. I could be told to jump off a bridge. That doesn't right. I, I know, but you it. just said she's not told that. And I'm saying she very much is told. Well, I, I'm saying she, she doesn't have to. Again, my first thing would be, Michael, where? Who? Who is doing this? Why would like this is like so blatantly obvious? 
Like it's it's such this is a gimme. This is a this is a knock it in the fucking hole, man. This is the this is this is putting a, a, a gimme. She does it doesn't even occur to her to say who, where is this happening? Who's doing this? Well, you know what's happening. No, I don't. Who? It's the same thing when like people say like, oh, the red pill always says X. Well, you know they always want women to be involved in whole cookup culture. It's practically part of the utilities. You get it every time you pay your rent at your dorm. You get a brochure. You get a new. You get a new like reminder. Go make sure you fuck a lot of guys. <laughs> Who the fuck is he? Like, when's the last time this guy's been on a college campus, man? If anything, they tell you don't fuck anybody because you're gonna get ex- uh, for guys. You're gonna get, get kicked out for domestic or for sexual assault charges. Don't want to risk your fucking scholarship. Right? If anything is opposite of that, but they think. That in any it's because it's a, it has a university attached to it. That uh, that hookup culture is like part of the part of the orientation. I think it takes accountability off of women when we're constantly saying that the world told you to, no, and I, that's why you did it. No, no, no. I, I agree that their wills have been malformed, and that our, our entire education system, br- broadly speaking, uh, and now indulges the lower passions and mm-hmm. denies the rational will and denies even the place of reason and truth in, in public life. But she, so she does that. And she, and she makes bad choices, and she picks some dumb major, and she graduates, and she's told, "Don't get married. You got to go to move to the city, and you got to sleep with a thousand men." And- oh, oh, man! You know what gets me is the same people who pull this shit will also go and give Myron shit for like saying, "Who actually has said this? Fuck fifty women, right?" Okay, if you can, and I can, do, I can probably find the probably find the clips right where where Myron said something like that. Now, of course, everybody obsesses over that. But now we've gone from, oh, at, at college, they tell all the women to get involved in hookup culture. And now it's gone to fuck a thousand guys. And you got to get a job working as a middle manager at a widget factory. And you're going to do that. And you're going to totally bypass your childbearing years, sleeping around and going out mm-hmm. for brunch and working for Mr. McGillicuddy at she the widget factory. She chooses to do that. She's choosing it. And she's okay. making a poor choice. And she's being encouraged to do it by a fallen culture. Uh, so what I was getting at here is that when we're talking about uh, like, oh, what's what's causing societal decline? It's not ju- it's not just one thing. It's not just, oh well. It's it's we're going to save the West. No, it's actually women's nature to want to do this. So so she wants like when when Pearl's talking to Michael Knowles here, Mike wants to make this a social. It's a social construct, which kills me because not only do leftists use the blank slate and social constructionism, so do the right. They want to, it's usually a ghost in the machine and social constructionism. For the left, it's social constructionism and the blank slate. And you can be anything you want to, right? Start this whole part over. Okay. Did, I, did you get this part right here? Oh. And she's going to wake up one day and she's going to be. Let me back this up. Did I get it right here? Trying to and going out for again. brunch and working for Mr. McGillicuddy at she the Witches Factory. To do that. She's choosing it and she's okay. making a poor choice and she's being encouraged to do it by a fallen culture. And then she's going to wake up one day and she's going to be about 34 and she's going to regret all of these decisions mm-hmm. and she's going to cry into TikTok. That's what's mm-hmm. going to happen. That is a consequence. Mm-hmm. Living with the consequences of being used by men, mm-hmm. of not oh, being able to have a harder time getting marriage, men. not having kids, yeah. and, and... Why and, is it the... Uh, what? So that's so a consequence. I'm sorry. Okay, so... First off, here's where I would go with this. Uh, let me add this back to the thing, so you guys, because you guys are saying I didn't get to this part right here. All right, here we go. The greatest intergenerational transmission of left to right leaning ideology consists of parents who pass their liberal orientation to their daughters. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, in both countries, a left wing ideology is more likely to be transmitted than a right wing ideology by mothers and fathers. This is mainly driven by young female offspring. Young women consistently place themselves on the left of men across all combinations of parental ideology. Now, uh, the reason why am I bringing this up? The reason I'm bringing this up right here, uh, where did we go? There we go. The reason I'm bringing this up right now is because this has been a hot button topic for um, for a lot of trad cons right now. They're worried. In fact, I should that not only them, but like a lot of NGOs and the DHS who wants to come after me think that we're radicalizing these men, like these young men. Because they find the red pill and they think that it's like sort of a stepping stone or it's a, a gateway drug to them voting for Trump or becoming more right wing. Well, 
that's not what you need to be worrying about. What you need to be worried, what you be, need to be more concerned with is that the greatest intergenerational transmission of left to right ideology consists of parents, parents who pass their liberal orientation onto their daughters, not some mythological university, not some mythological ho uh, hookup culture, not some, uh, you know, not some like, oh, sex in the heat. I mean, Michael Knowles still thinks sex in the city is a thing right now, right? No, this happens before you get to university. It happens before you're even out of high school. It happens before all of this shit. You're, well, everybody's worried about this divide between uh, uh, the, this political divide, which I had some, I had a stat for this. Anyways, in the United States, the divide between leftist women and men on the right is like extraordinary right now. And they're making a big deal out of it. That's why I brought this up. That was one of the one of the reasons I, I pulled this stat for you guys. I pulled that out of it. So it's not just, it's not just like, oh, uh, go, let's go to university and we've got the orientation for like, are we going to, um, yeah, are we going to all be, we're all going to be sluts today, right? That's that you got to, you're at university. Well, you kind of have to be that way. No, it's, it, it, it's, it's a collective effort. Okay. But what the real crux of this whole thing is, is, is it, are women hypo agents or are they hyper agency? Now, what is the difference between that? There's a difference between hypo, maybe I should explain the concept of hypo agency. Hyper agency means I happen to the world. Hypo agency means the world happens to me. According to Michael Knowles, women have no agency whatsoever. The world happens to them. They don't have any choice in the matter. They have no free will. They have no, there's no moral agency right there. And if that's the case, then they can be blameless. And essentially, uh, he's just basically repeating a, a, a lot of the same sort of um, talking points, but certainly the same belief set that you're going to get from uh, a, a, more, a more religious set. You want to know why when you go to, for the few men that are still going to church right now, one of the reasons why men are fleeing the church is simply because there's nothing there for them, except for ridicule, except for do better, except for, there's no, there's no empowerment for men in the church. There's plenty for women. There's plenty of forgiveness. We just saw Nala. The reason why Christianity is so appealing to women who are, let's say, 20, certainly in their epiphany phase, but like 26, 28, whatever. The reason why it's so appealing, especially for women who've like sort of lived a lifestyle, maybe like Lana, like Nala has, is because it's based on forgiveness. I get a do-over. I get a mulligan. I'm hypo-agent. The world happened to me. I didn't know any better, but now I'm saved and now I'm redeemed. And, now, and that's part of the religion. I'm not saying it's not, but that's why it's attractive. The Lord has forgiven me. Why can't you? I never had any choice in the matter because I was cast into this world of hookup culture and, and, and you know, wet ass from you know, Cardi B. I was thrown into all of this. I didn't have any, any choice in the matter whatsoever. And, you know, Pearl, to her credit, at the, at the very least, is trying to make a lame attempt at, at, at that. But she's just getting railroaded by, by Michael Knowles. I do. I've been cutting you off a couple it's times. Okay. I do right. apologize. I I've do. got thick skin. I do. Cut her off. Cut them off. I don't. I don't mean to cut you off. It's okay. Um, but because my question is, why? Why do we always say is used by men? Because men, like, uh, women use are use women for sex. <laughs> no, but women don't. Women don't use. You know, there are women that hunt top men down and try to sleep with them. I'm sure the top men are th the top. I mean, I don't know what top men. But I know, probably but see, some pickup even, artist even the way you describe it, it's like always putting it on the men. Because men and women react differently to sex and because men tend to pursue in sex and women tend to be pursued because. Oh, no, not the top guys. You know, oh, what do you gosh. mean by a top guy? Yeah, like I, I, I've, I've interviewed, <laughs> I had um, I had Brittany uh, Renner on my show. Do you know who that is? I don't remember that name. You know, there are, there are girls that, that, they learn every, she talks about this. They learn every single thing about, like, they become targets, the men. Yeah. You know, and they 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 get the guys to sleep with them. They try to steal condoms. Like, it, it's, this is Who, not. Who's a top man? You mentioned a woman. Who's a top man? And am I a Well, this is, this is something. <laughs> I want to be. If you were dating again, if you were dating again, you might be. I would be. All right. That's good. <laughs> you might be. I mean, women, when there's money, you know. Just my money? It's not my <laughs> sparkling personality and my good looks? All right. Look it, look it. <laughs> okay. But 
I, I just notice in the language, like somehow it's always the men's fault when we talk about sin. So even, no, it's, even in that sin, women's it's, sin, it's, but it's women are women easily, are, w- w- women are taken advantage of because I, I disagree. All right, so here is Captain Save a Captain Save a drops into the co- into the chat here. Let me pull this up. Captain Save. Now, if you listen to what Michael Knowles is talking about, and I'm going to give Michael Knowles some shit here too. So, Michael Knowles' only understanding of sex is in a transactional nature. I do this and I get sex back. I become a high value man and therefore I get sex back. The only reason to become a high value man is so I can get sex back, okay? Pearl doesn't make those cases. She simply, because either she doesn't know to make those cases or she is just, relies on just rote memorization throughout this whole thing. Now, Mike, on the other hand, would have been an easy, he's an easy target here because his entire like sort of worldview is based on women's hypo agency, meaning that poor women, poor women, it's men's fault. And it's, this is something that is like a constant that, um, that gets, it's, it's repeated, but usually by like female, like trad cons, if men would be better then women will be better. It's, it's, it's men's fault that women have to go to OnlyFans. It's men's fault that, that, that women are fucked up. If men were a better choice, if men need to man up, Men need to be better men for women, not for themselves, not to simply because not for the empowerment of, of men, but rather to be better choices for women. That's what it comes down to. And we could save the West and write the course of the ship if that was just the case. And the problem is, is that, again, you're never going to get to that point when the responsibility is not met with a commensurate amount of authority. And you'll never, you'll probably never hear Michael Knowles talk about like, authority versus responsibility that that uh, quite honestly i think that's probably where i would have started because once you get past that then there's it's really there's nothing he can really come back after yeah he does he treats women like they're retarded children and again this is a guy i don't know how long he's been married or whatever but this is a guy who has not has no real re- frame of reference for what she's talking about now pearl on the other hand trying to sort of speak a different language to him because she's used to seeing Brittany Renner write a book about how to take advantage of people like PJ Washington, right? I mean, Brittany Renner is a, it, she's a bad example, Pearl. Don't use Brittany Renner anymore. Seriously. Use, use an average person. Use somebody like he didn't even know who Brittany Renner was. So like referring to Brittany Renner in this whole, in this whole show is kind of useless. And not that she would know that, but the thing is, is that, Brittany Renner has written a book, but has written books basically on how to essentially take advantage of high value men. The high value man she should have mentioned was PJ Washington. That's who she should have mentioned. PJ from the uh, uh, basketball player, the guy that she, her baby mama is basically. That's who she should have mentioned, but that never, that was never forthcoming. She wanted to say Andrew Tate. I'm pretty sure she wanted to say Andrew Tate, but she couldn't because she couldn't make a, an example of Andrew Tate because Andrew Tate is so like far gone. He's so, so high above everything else. It's, it's kind of like, doesn't make a, it doesn't make for a good example. Brittany Renner on the other hand, like referring to her. Okay. But the high value man in this case was PJ Washington that she baby trapped. And you're, that's a dead end. This is, a, this is that whole thing. Like even bring, bring up Brittany Renner. It's a dead end because she didn't do enough homework to know that PJ Washington was really who she was referring to. And in using her, you're using an outlier. You need to make, if you're going to make cases based on statistics, use those to use your actuary friend, right? Base those on like something that is relatable, something that is, that can be easily referenced because I'll tell you right now, there's probably, I'm, I'm just doing this just off the cuff right here. I'll guarantee you that there are people doing reaction videos to this right now, looking up every single stat that she quotes and just like running her up the fucking flagpole because she just doesn't know where they come from. And they might be doing the same thing to, to Michael Knowles as well. He's been married since 2018. Thank you for that. Per New Horizons. Okay. 